Hi there everyone, it's Suzanne Wagner. So I thought I'd have a little chat today on YouTube about uh, the difference between your intuition and your ego. It's one of those hard things in life to listen to your intuition and that's because intuition is an inexact science. So you do not know why you need to do something. Oftentimes with intuition you feel compelled by a force that's just outside of you to comply. And often you may not know the answer to your choice for a long time or sometimes ever. And that's what makes it sort of difficult because you don't get this instant feedback that says, oh, that was the right decision, other than this feeling that's inside that is more congruent and in alignment with you. So, you know, egos want what they want. They are beyond reason, um, but they use the mind as a weapon to make you do what it wants. The ego can find all sorts of excuses to help you justify terrible choices and behaviors, and it can make things up to make you feel obligated to make those choices that are not in your best interest over time. For some reason, and I don't know why, um, maybe as the Buddhists say to me that it's about past life, good karma, and dharma, and my merit points from other lifetimes, but I have this inner knowing that is so much stronger than my mind. And it's also really clear that when my mind is talking and my ego is talking and when it's my intuition. And like I said, intuition feels not like a justification. Um, it doesn't feel like an analyzation or a figuring out or making sense of. It's something that just sort of hits you and it oftentimes hits your gut. And for me, you know, there are moments that it's completely irritating and frustrating because, you know, I'm human. I have karma. I want what I want also. And I am, after all, human working through my own karmic journey. But as I accept the inevitable choice that compels me into action that my ego really does not want, I learn that the inner self is right over and over and over again. And that realization or that recognition, it's, it's not fun. Um, it's often filled with shock, followed by appreciation that my inner self forced me to act when it did without logical explanations as to why. Um, today I was taking this moment to kind of reflect on those many potentially horrible pitfalls that I have managed to avoid, and trust me, they are numerous. And I wonder and marvel at my good karma that I've had enough knowing to follow that voice. Um, it was never an easy thing to do the right thing. Um, it was never easy to stop the ego as it wants to race down the road when the bridge is out. Um, it's never easy to step aside and allow another person to learn their own karmic les lesson and for me not to save them. It is never easy to allow, um, you know, some another person to find out that life has consequences. Um, it's never easy to recognize that someone is not ready to be helped. So, you know, I'm a psychic and I have all this insight and intuition, but I, I don't pretend to be enlightened um, I do not pretend to be fully awake, but I, I do recognize that I am awake to something. And I say it like that because I think that we have a misperception of enlightenment that, you know, there's going to be this magical moment and bam, you know, you're just enlightened. And it really doesn't happen that way. I mean, even if you talk to the gurus, um, and the yogis and the bodhisattvas, there's this um, series of lessons that awaken you and you become awake to a pattern or um, uh, a choice and you see your um, flawed thinking in that choice and then what happens is you never fall for that again. And I think that those awakening moments <laughs> kind of start to stick together and you start to have a, a broader um, awakened sense. And I say that because, you know, there's so many people out there right now that pretend to, to know everything. And so much of the marketing that's going on in the world right now, and the marketing on, on YouTube and the marketing on the internet, 
um, you know, says, you know, you have to like enroll people and you have to hook them and get their emails and, and do all this stuff. And you have to be certain and you have to be powerful and you have to charge a fucking fortune and, you know, to show that you have value. And I have just never been able to operate that way. Um, I just believe that the people who are ready for me and what I have to offer will naturally come and they'll find me. The people who um, are tracking the same energy or frequency will be attracted to me and that it's my karmic job and obligation and duty to support them in giving them and gifting them my insight to help them grow. But there are so many um, newfound false prophets and awakened teachers out there. And I'm not saying that they don't have a gift or a tool, um, because they probably do. Um, but I want to awaken everyone to the fact that everybody's human and everybody has flaws and idiosyncrasies. And so, you know, you want to take the gift that that teacher is offering and then also really be honest and looking at their life to kind of notice what's working and what's not working in their life. Um, I've never been the person who was chasing after the money. And I see so many of these people out here that um, their egos need to be satisfied by charging an exorbitant amount of money um, to validate a deeply insecure core self. And I'm just not that person. I mean, I just, you know, maybe in another lifetime I was super wealthy and, and money is not as big of a priority to me to validate who I am than other people. Um, but I do believe that, you know, there is this balance that you have to have inside yourself and that what I try and share with people is that balance. Um, so what I want to support everybody in today is in really starting to discern that difference between your ego mind and your core. And um, deep in your core, you know what's right. And you don't find a need to justify or even explain it. Um, because those that don't get it or that are uninterested are just not ready for that angle of perception. And again, you know, don't think that I think my angle of perception is the only one that's right. I think that we're all in these bubbles, these perceptual bubbles, and where those bubbles overlap is where we can relate. And um, some people, they're focusing in a totally different area than me. I, I happen to be really interested in focusing on evolution and consciousness. I'm really interested in focusing on helping the planet, saving the planet, lifting people up, but with honesty and truth and integrity and not with like these placating, um, positive, um, idealistic ideas that don't actually translate and help you have skills and tools in the real world, which is, is hard sometimes and really difficult. Um, so I want you to, I want to say that the truth is always out there. <laughs> it's always out there somewhere. Um, and I find that more often than not, the truth is obviously standing in plain sight. Um, but if you lack the wisdom to use your eyes, you cannot see. If you lack the understanding to interpret the information correctly, you will not move appropriately. And if you live in a lie, then that truth is going to hurt. And if you prefer the darkness, that truth will simply wait for another time. So just remember that Insight is not awareness. Okay, thanks. Bye.